my friend, how are you doing? So good to have you back here with Victory Church, our Bible study of this Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021 from Odessa, Texas. I say hello to you and welcome one more time to another Bible study here. This time I'm going to be reading Psalm 5 and I would like you to join me in this reading coming from the easy to read version. We read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, listen to me and understand what I am trying to say. My God and King, listen to my prayer. Every morning, Lord, I lay, I lay my gifts before you and look to you for help. And every morning, you hear my prayers. My friends, Praying is something that every believer should practice constantly. Unfortunately, we don't. We are aware of the importance of praying, but, but for whatever reason, we are not praying. We, we are aware of the presence of God. You are aware of the presence of God. But how often do you really pray? Probably you are the kind of uh, average individual that you say, I hope God will do this. I hope the Lord will help me with that. And maybe you say, thank you, God, for my food. And when you arrive to a place, you say, well, praise the Lord. He protected me one more time. And perhaps in the evening you say, thank you, God, for this day. Amen. But that's the extent of it. Although you are aware of God and you pray to the Lord, kind of, you don't have a formal, devoted prayer life. You know, one of the things that David experienced in order to become so powerful, spiritually speaking, and later he became very powerful in life, is going through difficulties and later experiencing the presence of God through those difficulties, through prayer through prayer and he says here one of these funny things that you find in the scripture lord my god listen to my prayer and understand what i am trying to say <laughs> don't you feel sometimes that that is exactly what you what you are thinking that you are trying to express to god something that but you don't even know how to say it and that happens in all kind of uh, communication, you know. You're trying to say something to somebody that you care for, somebody that you love, but, but you still cannot find the right words. That happens. When David says that so clearly here in Psalm 5, Psalm, Psalm 5, he says, Lord, listen, listen, Lord, and understand what I am trying to say. And from there, he, he takes off in this writing. You know what is one of the basic things in prayer? Honesty. Be honest in the presence of God. And he's, he says it that very clearly. Understand, Lord, what I am trying to say. I hope next time that you are praying, you will start there exactly. With sincerity in your heart, and determined to spend some time in the presence of God, expressing yourself to Him with whatever you want to say, with whatever is in your heart, whether it's a problem that is bothering you or a gigantic need that you can't figure it out where to go, how to fix it, or simply you are grateful. You want to say thanks to the good Lord for, for something. But I, I hope that the next time that you will start in that route, you will stop for a second to think of the importance of becoming absolutely clear, transparent, and honest with the Lord. And you can even say, Lord, listen to my prayer and understand what I am trying to say. And from there, you start developing the sentences and expressing to the good Lord 
what is what you are feeling and what are the thoughts that you have in mind. Do you realize that praying is having a conversation with the good Lord? Of course, we understand we come to, to God in prayer because most of the time we have a need. We want to ask for something, right? We, we need a miracle. We need his intervention. We need his provision. We need his guidance. We need his provision or protection, whatever the case may be. But prayer is, is about that. It's about expressing ourselves, which is a big, uh, a big obstacle today. Precisely because we are getting so used to text message, I guess, that we don't want to utilize words to communicate with other individuals. And we are under the impression that because the Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts and He sees everything and He knows everything, there is no really a big need for us to express ourselves and say things verbally to the good Lord. One day, I was in near Washington, D.C. area, and I was visiting one of my friends. I had access to the, to the house where he lived, but I didn't go through the front door. For some reason, I wanted to go through the back door because there was a nice yard and uh, and actually I knew that he was probably hanging out in the patio well I was mistaken he was not in the patio he was not in the yard actually he was about to have dinner by himself he was waiting for me but I don't remember why uh, the point is I come to the house I arrive to the house and, and he's sitting there at the table and he has his food his drink, and he's about to eat, and, and I am walking, you know, through through the on the grass, through the yard, and I can see from the windows because that's the part that I liked about that house. It has a big, big windows and doors, you know, very beautiful doors made uh, with glass that you can see. And I noticed it was probably around seven p.m. And, and this guy is about to eat. And before he eats, I noticed that he stopped. He puts the napkin there, puts his hands together, bowed his head, closed his eyes, and prayed. And it was a short prayer. It was not like 20 minutes prayer. No, it was probably like a minute prayer, perhaps less than that. But I was very touched by seeing that. He was not aware that I was looking at him. I let him pray. Of course, I didn't interrupt him. And then he started eating. And then I start to think. What a privilege I had at that moment of observing somebody that being unaware that somebody else is watching him was devoting a time to talk to the good Lord. So I walked, I knocked at the door, he saw me, wave, get up, open the door, I get in and we start eating together because he was waiting for me to have dinner. It was special, I never forgot that. How often do we have that private encounter with God? How often do you, my friend, Invest that time to talk to the good Lord from the bottom of your heart and you express to him exactly how you feel. How often do you do that? Do you remember the last time you did that? When was the last time that you were sitting down and you closed your eyes, bowed your head and talked to the good Lord? about whatever, even sitting down on your bed or laying down in your bed, that you took your time to open your mouth and say to God whatever you were thinking of. When was the last time? Do you remember? Let me continue reading. Verse 4. God, you don't want evil people near you. 
they cannot stay in your presence. Fools cannot come near you. You hate those who do evil. You destroy those who tell lies. Lord, you hate those who make secret plans to hurt others. Wow. This is a prayer you realize. is David talking to the good Lord. And he is being fully aware, very conscientious, that bad people, those who are lying, making plans to hurt people, those who are dishonest, those who are practicing evil things, they cannot be near God. So sometimes, my friend, sometimes we are not able to come to the presence of God as often as we would like because maybe we are not practicing what is right but practicing what is wrong. Perhaps we are the ones that are not doing things right and we don't feel comfortable by coming to the presence of God. Is that your case? What is the reason why you are not investing enough time in prayer? just talking with the good Lord? Or you don't think it's necessary to, to talk to the good Lord? You know, sometimes we think we can handle things. You know, when it's uh, the, 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 the worst scenario about feeling that we don't, we don't need God, that we can handle things, is, uh, is the scenario where when we have enough money, or we have plenty of uh, food and material stuff, we have uh, good health, and, uh, and we have people around us, or people that love us, basically it's like we don't need anything. So as a result of that, we just stop talking to the good Lord. But have you noticed that when you review your own personal story, have you noticed that the times when you pray the most were those moments when you needed him the most. Then you were praying. What happened? Why suddenly you stopped praying? The Lord provided it with a, a solution. Whatever the, the, the exit was, whatever the solution was, the, the issue was over. So, and then you move to the next thing, right? You move to the next thing. So why did you stop praying? And you say, well, no, I didn't stop praying. I haven't, and I will never. I will continue praying. Really? Or do you think that you are praying just because you have the idea of God in your mind? But what about being on your knees or sitting down or whatever, and you just devote time to the good Lord to talk to him. Have you ever thought about romancing God? Let me tell you, when people are romancing one another, they just talk and talk and they say wonderful things to the other person, the object of their love. When it's about being together with somebody, certainly you can be quiet with a good friend and a good person, a person that you love. Yeah, there is nothing wrong with that. But most of the time, you exchange words. That's what I am saying. Have you stopped exchanging words with the good Lord? Or you just think that because the Holy Spirit dwells in you, there is no need of you for expressing things to Him? It's tricky, huh? Thinking about it. It's very tricky. Let's continue reading. Verse 7. But by your great mercy, I can enter your house. I can worship in your holy temple with fear and respect for you. Lord, show me the right way of living and make it easy for me to follow. People are looking for my weaknesses. So show me how you want me to live. One of the things that the Lord wants us to do in practice is precisely to keep talking to Him. Eventually, we will go to heaven. We believers will go to heaven. And we will be able to talk to the good Lord then. So how come 
you don't want to talk to the Lord now. If you don't de develop that relationship with the Lord, talking to Him as your Lord, as your friend, as the love of your life, what makes you believe that suddenly in heaven you will be start talking to Him? Or, don't you, or do you think that maybe God is not going to speak in heaven, that He will just look at all of us and then He will send a massive text message so everyone is going to receive a text message. The Lord says, I'm happy you all are here. It's not going to be that way. He will continue talking and speaking like He has, He is, and He will. Well, what about you? Are you tired of speaking? Well, maybe you don't want to speak with people for whatever reason. You are tired or you just don't want to talk to, to, talk to anybody. But what about the good Lord? You know when you start talking to God? When you are in need. Would you like to have needs so you can start talking to Him again? <laughs> you know, it's not a good thing. Stop talking to the good Lord. Depending on Him is vital for a believer. Be depending entirely on His mercy, power, provision, security. Therefore, the prayer time must be present every day of our lives, you know. Verse 9. My enemies, my enemies never tell the truth. They only want to destroy people. Their words come from mouths that are like open graves. They use their lying tongues to deceive others. Punish them, God. Let them be caught in their own traps. They have turned against you. So punish them for their many crimes. But let those who trust in you be happy forever. Protect and strengthen those who love your name. Lord, when you bless good people, you surround them, you surround them with your love like a large shield that protects them. David is closing this psalm with a powerful statement about how the enemy keeps talking and telling lies. You see, keeps talking and telling lies. And we, the children of God, you, a child of God, are refusing to speak words to please the Lord, to worship Him, to tell Him, Lord, I love you with all of my heart. I thank you for this beautiful day. I trust in you, Lord, that you will guide me through the day. I ask you, Lord, to give me the strength and healing that I need, etc. Those are words, my friend. The enemy keeps talking, and they, they don't stop talking. The enemy keeps saying all kind of stuff. You see that everywhere. They don't stop talking. Well, what about you and your prayer? Don't stop talking. Don't stop talking. Keep praying. Keep talking to the good Lord the whole day. But especially dedicate a time every day to worship Him. Look, let me read one more time for you the last part of this sound. He says, those who trust in, in you, be happy forever. Let them be happy forever. Because then it's going to be Protection and strength to those who love the name of the Lord. And He will surround you with His love like a large shield that protects them. You know, the protection of God is going to come to you. His love is going to come to you. I encourage you today. Go back to that place of prayer. Remember, my friend. When you were in so much trouble once or maybe twice, you used to pray a lot. You used to talk to the good Lord. Come back to that time. That is why it's so necessary to be a needy one. Let's be needy of God, from God. Let's keep praying. Keep talking to Him. 
Don't stop talking to the good Lord. Worship him. And if there is sin, get rid of the sin. If there is anything wrong you are doing, ask him to forgive you. And don't go back there. Just do what is right. Please him. Meditate in the word of God. Read songs out loud. Keep praying. Keep talking. That will keep you in the right track, my friend. Please, God, with your faith, when you keep praying and you keep talking to him, you, your faith keeps growing. And that faith is what pleases the Lord. Great miracles will continue happening in your life as long as you keep praying and glorifying the name above all names, the name of Jesus. And if you have never experienced a time of prayer by yourself, what if you try it today? And remember, when you pray, you pray to the Father, the Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the right way to pray, in the privacy of your heart, in the private place of your home, in the private place where there is nobody else. It's just between you and the Lord. He will do amazing things in your life. You will see. Thank you for watching and connecting. And if you are in Odessa, come to Victory Church, 2400 West, 81st Street in Odessa, Texas. See you next time, friends.